You and your allies make your way through the wild woods. The smell of wet trees and damp earth pervades the forest, and your steps make little squelching noises in the mud as you move along. Just ahead, from the darkness between two trees, a quartet of figures emerge. They're shorter than you, but much broader, and the creatures give low grunts as they begin to close the distance. The moonlight streaming through the canopy dapples their dark black fur and gleams off the razor edges of their axe blades. Orcs, you think, as your blood runs cold. On your left, Takani draws her seal killer, while on your right, Tristan begins to mutter the incantation of Armatrutes. What do you do? Hey everyone, JM here, Game Master of the Hidden Knife. I'm starting a new series on this channel designed to explain what I love about the Dark Eye. I hope to get you excited about the world and the game, and to help you navigate through transitioning to playing the Dark Eye. The rest of the Hidden Knife will join me when they can, and give helpful advice and insights from the player side of things. So let's begin. In this video, what I want to tackle is why even look at the Dark Eye? In the vast market of RPGs today, we have a plethora of choices for fantasy games. A good friend of mine looks at a new fantasy game and asks, what does this game do that others don't? To answer this, we'll start by looking at what I feel is one of the unique strengths of the Dark Eye, and it's the setting of Aventuria. The Dark Eye takes place on the continent of Aventuria. It's a vast land filled with many peoples, cultures, kingdoms, and empires. With a detailed history that stretches back over 4,000 years, Aventuria has a richness to it, which can provide you with a lifetime of adventures. It's a setting which feels strangely familiar. Aventuria pulls its inspiration and derives its tone and tropes from the fairy tales and history of Europe. Thorwall has the feel of a Viking kingdom. The Midden Realm feels drawn forth from the stories of the Brothers Grimm and the city-states of the Tulamedes step out of the pages of A Thousand and One Nights. The various kingdoms of Aventuria reflect historical kingdoms, albeit influenced by the presence of magic and gods. Magic, while pervasive, is subtle, dark, and mysterious. The Twelve Gods work their will through their Blessed Ones and through their churches, and the belief in them is the glue which holds much of human civilization together. The depth of Aventuria hasn't been manufactured, but has grown organically over the course of a 30-year living history. Aventuria has continually evolved because the players and the writers share in the world's development. This has led to a game where the fauna of the realm, its laws, and culture are just as detailed as the statistics for monsters. In Aventuria, your knowledge of herb lore or heraldry can save your character's life just as readily as her skill with a blade. Now we'll dive deeper into the topics of setting and system in later videos, but I hope this overview of Aventuria has whet your appetite for the Dark Eye. Our next video will delve into how to start off your own Dark Eye campaign. The easiest way to learn more is to download their quick start rules from drivethroughrpg.com. I'll put a link to it below. It gives you a quick overview of the rules and a short adventure to try out. It even comes with four pre-generated characters. The only thing missing from it is an explanation of what the skill Gaukili is, and it's a skill for sleight of hand or juggling. I hope this video, and indeed this series, will be informative for you. If there's anything you would like to see me or us at the Hidden Knife talk about in these videos, please comment below. Until next time, good gaming.